How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Flame and we are back with another Fantasy Premier League video and today we're going to be looking at players to watch in game week two. This is a series that we're going to be doing from time to time, much like teams to watch and we're basically going to be taking a peek at some players we've got to keep our eye on to see if they become a nice valuable Premier League asset for our fantasy teams if you haven't done so already make sure to leave a like on the videos that you are enjoying make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new around here greatly appreciate the support that we've been having and give us a follow over on twitter and twitch it's pilot flame 226 on those platforms twitter is where we post all of our little content bulletins so you can see what's coming up in the week over on youtube and on twitch in terms of our streams and speaking of our streams we have two this week as normal we have our preview for game week two at 7 p.m edt this friday as well as a deadline stream which is one hour before the deadline as normal which i think is 5 a.m uh, edt i usually leave a pinned comment on every youtube video as to when the next stream is so give us a follow over on twitter and twitch uh, we also have our mini league up and running flames recruits make sure to join that the auto join link is in the description of every fantasy premier league video as well as the code if you want to do it that way is over in my twitter bio and turn those notification bells on so you can get crucial series for your fpl knowledge like this already right onto your computer screen the second they are readily available so without further ado let's see what players we have to take a look at going into game week two so the first player we have on our list is Phil Foden. He comes in at 6.5 million this season, 69 points last season, five goals, two assists, average three points per game. Now he has some pretty iffy fixtures potentially uh, for Manchester City. Wolves away, you know, FDR rating of three, same for Leicester at home. Both very tough teams will be in and around the top six for sure this season. And then they have Leeds away, which is an FDR rating of two in game week four. But it's just a matter of whether Foden is going to be starting. Now with David Silva leaving, people are speculating that he might be going into that role. Leroy Sané is also left, which they've brought in uh, Ferran Torres to to kind of cover in that regard but i'm not sure where foden's going to necessarily play if he's going to be more of the creator and kind of the like you know metzala role where he's like you know one of the number eights and kind of getting in those half spaces you know getting involved and in taking shots and how david silva kind of was in his prime i think he can be a fantastic asset if he's playing week in week out at six and a half million but we'll have to see where he plays if he's playing on the wing and playing like an inside forward if Mendy's playing with him as well, if he's on the left wing, uh, if he's on the right wing, then, you know, Kyle Walker's going to get forward. So it all depends on where he plays and how much starting time he's actually given because he could potentially be an absolute bargain at six and a half million. And he, he's a, a city cover, as it were, if you like to use that term. I don't like it personally, but if he's six and a half million and he's part of a city team that's scoring four to five goals when they're playing you know, teams that they should be beating quite handily. I think that Phil Foden is definitely one of those players that uh, is is very bright um, and can be uh, quite intelligent on the ball and, and make things happen. He has had, obviously, his disciplinary uh, issues in uh, recent weeks with him and Mason Greenwood, who's actually on our list here as well, um, have been uh, kind of punished for their actions. So whether He's kind of ousted from the team for a week or two to kind of say, you know, you know, slap on the wrist. Don't do that again. You know, go think about what you did and then come back in a couple of weeks. We will have to see. That's why we have to monitor uh, Manchester City and Manchester United in game week two. And I think Phil Foden is no exception to this rule. The next player we have up on our list here is the aforementioned Mason Greenwood with 103 points last season, 10 goals, one assist and an average of 3 point three points per game made a lot of substitute appearances and then kind of cemented his place post restart from game week 30 plus onwards and i think that he could definitely be exceptional at 7.5 million with his newly changed role in midfield however this does uh, uh you know kind of change depending on two things one depends on how you know harsh the actions are for him and Foden are going to be uh, him more so because he's at a uh, you know Manchester united always under the spotlight that sort of stuff and two it all depends on whether or not Jaden Sancho or another replacement comes in and fulfills that 
you know, permanent role on the right-hand side. United's fixtures to start off with are very good. Crystal Palace at home, Brighton away being an FDR rating of 2. And then Spurs at home is always a solid fixture for Manchester United to score in, especially since Jose Mourinho's team has already gotten off to a not-so-great start after losing 1-0 at home to Everton. Mason Greenwood's a fantastic player, can play either side. More likely, he's going to be playing through the middle when he, uh, you know, gets older and starts to get towards his, uh, you know, prime years. Probably 23, 24, he'll probably cement himself as like an out and out, you know, number nine. And he's both footed, which is absolutely scary. Just think of him in, in a mold that, like, RVP, when he was on his left foot, he was deadly. Robin, when he was on his left foot, he was deadly. Henri, when he was on his right foot, he was deadly. Mason Greenwood could potentially be a combination of of those two which is scary to think about for someone who's you know we're talking about at 18 um, and he could be the next big thing uh, at Manchester United and could potentially depending on how his path goes be the top goal scorer suppressing Rooney's record uh, one day so we'll have to see kind of how it goes we'll have to see how he's utilized this season depending on the signings that United make in the window if at any at all and depending on where he is going to be positioned on the field, as he was typically played from the right post restart. But if he's starting to play, you know, closer towards the middle, maybe in a pairing of, of two of him and Martial up front, I would definitely be looking at him at 7.5 million this season. Now the next player we have on our list here is Marcel. I think is how you pronounce his name. Newly signed defender for Wolves, coming in at five million. In his few games that he played, it was less than half a season uh, at his previous club. He got one goal and one assist in Ligue 1, and uh, he doesn't have a great fixture in game week two. An FDR rating of four versus Manchester City at home. But then Wolves have a very good run of fixtures, starting that off with West Ham away and Fulham at home, which are FDR ratings of two. Now I've kind of highlighted Marcel just because he's one of the new signings but it also puts pressure under uh, the potential rotation of defenders for Wolves so he can play center back he can play left-sided center back in a back three he can also play left back in a back four and left wing back in a back five so it all depends on how he's utilized if he's played at left wing back then Vinagre kind of becomes you know not as you know useful at 4.5 million you have to pay that little extra 0.5 to get the starting left back they still have him replaced Doherty. So it's just a bunch of different question marks as to what Wolves are going to line up with, uh, you know, overall. And how they, when, once they cement their team, once the transfer window is closed, what their team is actually going to look like. I think Adama Traore may play his part at right wing back until they potentially bring a more permanent uh you know, kind of a player in there with the absence of, of Doherty as he was transferred over to Spurs. And I think that Markel could play, you know, be kind of half and half with Vinagre, which may make us, you know, shift our focus elsewhere, maybe to the likes of Roman Sice. But then again, his position's potentially on a threat as Marcel can play left center back too with Cody and Bolly being, you know, kind of mainstays in that team. And I think that it could be interesting to see how Wolves kind of uh, develop overall, as well as the front players as well. You know, you have Potence, you have Jota, you have Jimenez. They have that um, uh, new kid, 18-year-old, uh, I think his uh, name is Silva, uh, is his last name. Uh, he's another one that could be interesting as well. So we'll have to see kind of how uh, Nuno Espirito Santo sets up his team. But it's the defense that we're kind of looking at because Wolves last year were very solid defensively, especially after restart. So we'll have to see kind of how that plays out. And we got to keep an eye on him from game week two onwards. Now the next player we have on our list here is Christian Pulisic. Now the reason I put Pulisic here is this could be any Chelsea midfielder. It can either be Pulisic, it could be Kai Havertz, and it could be Hakim Ziyech. Uh, Pulisic, I'm just going to highlight his stats here. He had 127 points last season, 9 goals, 8 assists, average of 5.1 points per game. In game week 2, they have a pretty tough fixture at home to Liverpool. Um, but they have a very good run of fixtures after that. West Brom away, Crystal Palace at home. West Brom just shipped three goals to Leicester, although it was two penalties. Crystal Palace, they did win versus Southampton, but I think you definitely favor the, the attacking Chelsea side that could be put out there. And I think that with uh, Pulisic, you can always go down to Ziyech at his price point. That's another good thing. He's only uh, 0.5 away from Hyun Min Son if you wanted to go up there. But I think the reason I put Pulisic here is because he was their talisman last season. He was the one who allowed Chelsea to get uh, you know, in and around the top four and basically secure their top four position. And I'm curious to see how he's going to develop this season going forward. Still very young. 
and with the likes of Havertz and Ziyech and Werner coming in, you can see a front six of Kante Kovacic as like the double pivot. Havertz in the number 10, Pulisic playing uh, out on the left, Ziyech out on the right, Werner through the middle, and then you have the likes of Thiago Silva plus one kind of holding down the back with the double pivot with Reese James and Chilwell when fit bombing forward and Pulisic and Ziyech kind of coming as inside forwards so it's going to be very interesting to see if that kind of unfolds that way if Pulisic is you know playing a bit more wide then we'll probably go for the likes of Havertz who could play as like a shadow striker to Werner we'll have to definitely see on that front and I think the next couple of game weeks especially when they play versus Liverpool in game week two uh, this coming game week, I think that it could be quite interesting to see how they kind of, you know, when they go up against tough opposition, do they change their shape? Do they, you know, do they make substitutes early? Do they play certain players in certain roles? We'll have to see. And then as the weeks go on and on and, you know, Chilwell's fit and Ziyech is fit, I also want to see who's potentially on penalties and set pieces, you know. Uh, uh, Pulisic could potentially take the penalties. Ver same with Werner, same as Ziyech. Same with Havertz. Who knows? I mean, Thiago Silva might take the penalties. We don't know because Willian was basically on everything. Jorginho, when he's on the field, typically takes penalties sometimes too. But he's not going to be a mainstay in the team as Conte and Kovacic. And potentially Billy Gilmore might even be picked over him in that role. So it's definitely quite interesting. And I thought I would just highlight Pulisic just because he's the talisman. He's the player when you think of, you know, Chelsea of last season. Just like Bruno Fernandes for United. Just like Kevin De Bruyne for Man City and so on and so forth. So I definitely think we got to pay attention to how Chelsea adapt um, versus tougher opposition. And once their new signings start to all come into the same team, we'll see how they get along with each other and the last player we have on our list here is Luke Shaw now I highlighted him just because he's someone who has been a bit you know inconsistent with his you know injuries as of you know the recent uh, few years before he had that significant injury uh, that he had a few years ago uh, he was considered one of the best left backs uh, in the country and I think that he could potentially get back to that form especially for the likes of Manchester United and how they want to play Manchester United obviously have fantastic fixtures. Crystal Palace at home, Brighton away, Tottenham at home, potentially some clean sheets there. I mean, if Everton can keep a clean sheet versus Spurs, so can United, who had a better defense last season. So I see no reason why not to. And I think that the 5 million defender slot could potentially become more and more and more crucial in terms of value for attacking output as well as clean sheets. So just to name a few defenders in there, you have Hector Bellerin, who was fantastic versus Fulham bombing forward all day basically kind of getting in the box near the penalty spot in most points and was uh, you know fantastic Reese James uh, can potentially you know do the same thing still developing as well Luke Shaw you know slightly older than him and we know he can get forward and put in a good delivery and as a left footer which is crucial to United's team because they don't have very many in there um, so I think that him with the delivery going down the left flank could prove to be quite valuable for United. It's just that injury concern um, that we're worried about. And I think that if he can overcome that, we can definitely see a very valuable 5 million defender in Luke Shaw this season for Manchester United. And that's going to do it for this edition of Players to Watch in Game Week 2. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you've been enjoying it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. And make sure to turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content like this video as soon as it is readily available. Also, give us a follow over on Twitter and Twitch. It's PilotFlame226 on those platforms. Links are also in the description. We have our Flames Recruit Mini League up and running. The auto-join link is in the description below as well as the code is over in our Twitter bio. Over on Twitch is where we do our game week previews as well as our deadline streams, which we'll be doing one of each this week. We have a preview on Friday at 7 p.m. EDT. And then we also have our deadline stream one hour before the deadline for FPL on Saturday. So make sure to check us out on that. Typically, I leave a pinned comment as to when the exact time is of when we'll be doing our next stream over on Twitch will be. And Twitter as well is where we do a bulletin of what content is coming this week. I typically post that on Sundays and uh, you should see uh, kind of a roadmap of what videos we're doing this week. So make sure to check that out as well. So thanks for watching and until the next one, take care.